This is probably the second worst racing game I've ever played after Big Rig's Over the Road Racing. Yeah, I know, I'm just being hyperbolic and there are surely worse games I haven't tried yet and blah blah blah. I don't give a shit. Watch this. Do I even need to say anything else here? Although perhaps I should address the lack of music, which I'll talk about in a moment, but in the meantime I'll substitute some songs from another video game instead. Lego Racers, perhaps? Yeah, okay, that works well enough, I guess. Cartoonish music for cartoonish graphics. Now look at all these cool cars. Which one should I buy? Well, I don't fucking know. What's the top speed and acceleration? Oh, okay, cool. Do I need to write that down so I can compare it to the other cars? I can't remember all the shit for each vehicle that I look at. When I'm scrolling through cars, all I see is the name of the car, the price, and my own account balance. That's all important info, to be sure, but that doesn't tell me anything about the car. So I have to click each car, look at it, and then back out so I can scroll sideways to the next car, and then click that one so you glance at those stats too before backing out yet again, and on and on it goes. And it's tedious as fuck and I hate it. I guess they really wanted to show off the 3D models for each vehicle in a showroom setting, which I can appreciate, but... Uh, whatever. Maybe I'll write down the specs for each car into a spreadsheet later. Or I could just say fuck it and pick any random car, because I'm getting ahead of myself anyways. I should just start a new profile for the purposes of this review. Oh wait, I remember now. The option to create or select a profile is only available when you start the game. I already fucked up this save file anyways. Okay, I restarted the game, and I'll just click create new player. I might as well use my YouTube name. Uh... Seriously? My name can only be eight characters long? Is that just so it can fit on a license plate? Okay, if, if that's the case, then I guess there's some logic behind that thinking. But it's still annoying. I guess I'll just use my older profile then. If I can recover from having zero credits left. Uh... How do I back out of this screen? Okay, look. I guess the most logical thing to do is to just continue by creating a junk profile, but why should I HAVE to do that if I click this screen by mistake? There's no back button to click, and the backspace and escape keys on the keyboard don't work. Oh, okay. Alt F4 will take care of that. Fuck's sake. Alright, enough fucking around. Let's race. Wait, there's no license plate on the back of this car? What was the point of limiting my profile name to eight characters? Motherfuckers. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Well, we're off to a great start now. Just gotta... let it drive past me. Alright. Oh, there's the police car. I'll just let it... oh, fuck. I really don't like the way these cars handle in this game. It feels very slippery. Holy shit, when I hit some of these cars head-on, they just launch into the air vertically in addition to being jolted backwards. So there's a couple of reasons why Test Drive 6 isn't being shown here with its own music. One, it's copyrighted third-party music, so that problem needs no further explanation. But secondly, the music won't play on modern versions of Windows anyways because it relies on something called WMA Source Filter, which was removed in Windows Vista and onwards. Some technical shit like that. Whole fucking god shit damn it. These fucking traffic physics are absurd. But, uh, really the worst part about it was that all the files are encoded at a bitrate of 64 kilobits a second, which is insanely low. Especially since the entire game is a little less than half the capacity of a compact disc, so they had more space to store higher quality audio files on the game CD if they wanted to. 
And you wouldn't have to install all the game data on the hard drive if you wanted to conserve space on the consumer's PC, but still, the music is the best part of the game. Or maybe the least worst, depending on how you look at it, so that's kind of disappointing. Well, I'm doing a pretty shitty job at the moment. I, I seriously hit the light pole? Fuck's sake. The physics are so bad that these cars might as well just be blocks of styrofoam getting blasted away by a gust of wind. See? Look at that. Look at that! On the other hand, I suppose I could appreciate the fact that I neither totaled my car nor came to a complete stop when I knocked the other car sideways. Oh, this guy's gonna try to take a shortcut on the scaffolding off to my right, which isn't even a shortcut because it's a narrow path that's difficult to maintain any sort of a competitive speed on without bouncing around on the walls in there. That guy literally just threw his first place position away for nothing. Holy fuck, how much longer is this race? Okay, fourth and final checkpoint. Fuck's sake! I can't get over how wildly these traffic cars just bounce around like a football after a missed catch. But yeah, after I win this shit... Uh, well, jeez, do I have any reason to look forward to anything else this game might have to offer? Oh my god. I might have a healthy lead, but I'm gonna get overtaken by another racer if I keep running into shit like... FUCK OFF! Oh my god, I see the other racer, the, the tiny- Freaking hit me from behind! I am so fucked now. Okay, it's basically a drag race at this point where I have a starting disadvantage and I hope he hits another card because that's the only way I'm gonna save this shit. Oh damn, I'm actually catching up. I'm fucking... Alright. Second place it is, then. Oh, I forgot there were police cars. But yeah, that was a pretty shitty racing experience. Just, I swear to god, I'd rather race around on lawnmowers. Yeah, this is the life. Fucking shit. Well, this is neat and all, but what kind of a lawnmower goes up to 90 kilometers an hour? Or about 56 miles an hour, if you prefer. And the tachometer says the engine is revving up to 5,000 RPM? Insane. These lawnmowers are quite advanced, you see. Their tachometers have numbers written on them. Test Drive 6 doesn't have that. You already have the markings, which I would think implies values that are multiples of a thousand. Why not put numbers there? Tick marks aren't even spaced apart from each other consistently. And does every single car in this game really need to go all the way up to 10,000 RPM before shifting gears? I should also point out that, like all racing games I play, I have the game set to an automatic transmission and the options. So, I decided to try a bit of manual transmission driving. Yeah, this is why I default to automatic. I have to say, though, I was confused about the fact that this car, which the game says is a Ford Mustang 428 Cobra Jet, only had three gears in it. I thought the developers made some kind of mistake, but no, apparently older automobiles had fewer gears compared to modern cars. Yeah, Wikipedia says it did in fact feature a three-speed transmission, which surprised me because I would have just assumed more powerful sports cars would have had more gears or something, but I don't know that much about cars anyways. I guess what I'm getting at here is that I'll give credit where credit is due. This is an example of some good attention to detail right here. On the other hand, further research showed that the tachometer in that particular car only went up to 8,000 RPM, so... <coughs> You failed! By the way, I can screech the tires just by shifting gears, even when the car's not moving. Oh yeah, there's cop chases too in this game. I'll get to that in a second, but the siren is kinda loud though. Wait, it didn't... work? I don't get it. Are you shitting me? The sound effects volume is just... arbitrarily effective? I mean, the engine noise went away, but what the hell? But why the fuck does it not shut up when I pause? I... Uh, I need to relax. I'll try some scenic driving without cop cars chasing me. Now this is relaxing. Just a little fun cruise along a small coastal town.
Fuck this game. Oh, now I'm hearing engine noises? Uh... Is it coming from the car in front of me? And apparently screeching tires still make noise, too. I mean... Clearly my own engine is silent, right? That ah, shit. Okay, so like this, it's normal. And now I've got nothing. Well, I still get background noise. Some of it's suspension sounds, too. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Actually, I can hear the faint sound of the raindrops as well. Did the wind just randomly start? I'll go over this again, because fuck this car, too. I just cannot believe the sound effects do whatever they want, regardless of how you set the volume slider. How did they fuck something like that up? And the wind just stopped again. Oh, now it's back! Also, I noticed that while sometimes the siren or some other sound effect continues to make noise when you pause the game, other times it doesn't. Apparently it depends on if you're still holding the accelerator button, typically the up arrow key when you pause. If you are, then it automatically jumps up from continue to the sound volume slider and triggers some of the sound effects again. But if you were to release the up arrow key and then pause the game, it won't do that. And regardless of how you pause, once you touch that sound option, moving the menu selection highlighter away from it won't mute it again. I don't know why the menu does this, but I honestly shouldn't be surprised by it at this point. I mean, for real, how difficult is it to fucking have the same volume level applied to every sound effect at all times? And yeah, there have been times where even the omnipresent police siren disappears on its own, so even that's not permanent. But it's trivial to bring back, though. Good, fix that. This fucking siren turns itself on and off whenever it wants, regardless of how close you are to the racers. See? Like that. And it's broken again! What the hell? Alright, fuck the audio settings then. Damn, this revving engine sound effect in the menu is also still making noise. And loud. Just like the police siren, it's fucking loud, too. Yeah, I did turn the sound effects all the way down. What the fuck? I mean, I, I know you're sitting there watching this, and you're all like, Well, of course you turned it down. I just watched you do it. But this is so goddamn stupid that I'm really struggling to understand and accept this. So if there was ever a situation where you wanted to play this game, which is already a questionable premise, and you wanted to use some other program running in the background to listen to music, then fuck you! You can only turn down SOME of the sound effects so that you still can't hear your music any more clearly. And I'll talk about some other settings while I'm here. The resolution actually goes all the way up to 1920 by 1080 but only in 16-bit color mode. There are 32-bit color modes, but the max resolution doesn't go up that high. And the setting only applies when racing. The main menu is locked at a constant resolution of 640x480. And for some godforsaken reason, I can't change the fogging setting, but one of those arrows is lit red and clicking on them changes the view distance setting instead. It's like, what else can we make confusing and non-functional here? Well, detail works. Oh, the hell? Now the fogging setting changes the detail setting? Oh, but no, I can't get it to change the texture quality. <sighs> and going back to audio problems for a moment, you might be thinking, well, the music doesn't work on Windows 7, so maybe the sound effects are glitching up on a more modern operating system too, but the volume for them functioned normally on Windows 98. Well, as it turns out, I have a Windows 98 PC. There's no way in hell it's able to screen record anything, so I'll do this with my phone like an unprofessional jackass. I should turn down the music here as well so we can hear what's going on, but this computer is slow enough that the volume slider actually takes a few seconds to fully mute, and I had to turn view distance all the way down to get a semi-decent frame rate. But the point is that I was fair and compared the game's functionality on an operating system it was designed for, and lo and behold, I get the exact same bullshit either way. Just listen to this.
I don't know why I didn't try mounting my smartphone on something so it would look slightly less unprofessional instead of holding it in one hand while trying to play on the keyboard with the other, but fuck it. Interestingly, though, I don't get the same suspension noises here. I figure that's less to do with the operating system and more to do with the fact that the sound glitch is influenced by so many variables in the game code that it's impossible to predict exactly what it's going to do. I'm gonna slam into him. Oh, I missed. Fuck! No collision noises there, and the siren is muted now. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. Okay, manipulating the sound option in the main menu when you pause to toggle the siren still works. So that's cool. Yeah, that's nice. I can share some of the same three-dimensional space as this taxi cab. Alright, well I'm going back to my main computer. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. I was gonna show off some police chases. By the way, that's a nice shot. It's one thing if the camera is locked into following a car and something crazy happens with the physics and the car partially goes through the road or something. <clears throat> it's quite another thing if it's a pre-planned camera shot that's part of a cutscene and that shows the same unrendered areas beyond the road surface and walls. God damn. Three, two, one, go! So here we go. We're in Hong Kong this time, and the racers always seem to have a sizable head start. Oh, he's spinning out! Ah, dang, nearly had him! Oh. Alright then. So that's one down, four to go. Here we go. I see the next guy. Oh, he stopped! Boom! Fucking idiot! Oh, his car is still intact. I guess a vehicle is less likely to be damaged if it has fewer polygons. I will say, though, this game doesn't seem to use rubber banding AI. Or if it does, it's not very aggressive. Oh, the fuck was that shit? Oh, god damn it, traffic's fucking everything up. Well, now I've got one car behind me. Shit. Well, if I can get this guy, you'll see how rubbing up against them fills the meter above the racer's car. Yeah, I like that. It's a green bar that fills up with red. And in case anyone's colorblind. Now, even if you fill it up part way, it will go down over time, so if you rubbed up against another car and filled it 90% of the way, you'd better finish the job quick or that meter will have emptied itself after a minute or so. And the other two cars were so far ahead of me that they were off the radar. I'm catching up to another one now, though. Oh, fuck off! Seriously, well, there's no way I'm probably gonna catch either one of them now. He's maintaining a steady distance from me. Shit! Is it really necessary for that sound effect to repeat itself in fragments like that? Now he's completely out of sight. I see him again, but what's gonna happen is that he'll cross the finish line and my car will just come to a stop without warning. They're just sitting ducks now, but I can't arrest them. Now I'm trying out Paris, and these guys are just zigzagging all over the place. Okay, I got one fucker. Even the game's AI can't deal with the shitty controls. Oh, wow. Wow! Just gonna hit me from behind? Enjoy your time handcuffed in the back of your car, tying up traffic in the middle of the street. God fucking damn it. You know, it took me like two fucking minutes to finally catch up to one of these guys, so I guess there really isn't any rubber banding AI. What the hell? Did he just give up? This is sheer laziness. Or are you telling me the other cars can get stuck and can't reset themselves back onto the road? And no, I never did catch the fifth racer. Not when I keep hitting shit. I've about fucking had it. I'd rather play the Game Boy Color port for Driver, You Are the Wheel Man. You can do police chases in that game, too. Holy shit! They just swarm at you from out of nowhere. Almost like in some videos I've seen of the Grand Theft Auto police cars. Damn it! Hit another car! Oh, for fuck's sake, really? This is actually kind of intense, and all I'm doing is driving a car that looks like a squashed ice cream sandwich from a top-down view in the Game Boy Color and I just got hit again. 
from behind, but the graphics may be simpler, but this is still fun in its own way. The controls are simple and intuitive enough and everything. The AI is clearly more intelligent as well. Also, I'm just showing the Game Boy Color port because that's what I played as a kid, but it's still fun, even if it's a little weird at times. Not only am I evading a police car, I'm doing it while driving in reverse. Can I do that in Test Drive 6? Apparently I can! <laughs> this is great! Ah, shit. Okay, so this isn't quite as flawless as it was in Driver. I've got two cop cars to deal with, and other traffic elements could interfere at any time. And I know I'm driving forwards instead of in reverse, but ah, uh, fuck off, damn it. Well, I guess it wasn't going to last forever. But as I was saying, in this game, driving forwards instead of swinging myself around backwards seemed more practical. And apparently hitting a car I already wrecked was enough to trigger one of those two cop cars to come after me again. And this motherfucker can't even catch me now that I am driving backwards, albeit in a somewhat straight line. He even slowed down as I was putting on the brakes a couple of times. I'm a fucking idiot. Oh shit, I forgot there was a timer. Let's see what I can do with this guy. Oops, I hit him by accident. At least that didn't result in filling up that police proximity meter too much. I really wish I could see that above my own car while I'm fleeing. And he's just driving along as if... I'm not there. Alright then. Oh, what an asshole. Let's see if I can turn around without being caught. Shit! Ah, fuck. Alright, he got me. Hey, come back here. Seriously? Nothing? Oh, so the second time I hit him, he reacts and I get busted instantly. Okay then, but out of all the things I could have been ticketed for... Resisting arrest? Why not something else like attacking a police car? I swear to god I had more fun playing Driver. Oh, and since I mentioned that that was on the Game Boy Color... <sighs> I guess I'll take a look at this real quick. That was actually a decent pixel art version of the cover of the game. Yeah, Dodge Charger is fine. I don't really care where I race either. Well, at least the graphics are more detailed than in Driver. That's actually not bad for Game Boy Color. Uh. Wow. I've barely left the starting line and I'm nearly half a minute into this race. Okay, but jokes aside, I have to be fair and point out that given how slowly the timer is progressing on the bottom of the screen, I'm going to assume that there's something weird about this particular game that's throwing the emulator off. It looks like it's taking about five real seconds for the timer to count one second in the game. So I'll do a bit of video editing and speed this up to see how it looks at what I think the proper speed was supposed to be. Well, now it looks normal. Too bad I can't fairly judge it without playing it at the proper speed myself. The graphics are better than in Driver, and even though I wouldn't have thought that racing a car with a D-pad at an isometric angle would be a good idea, even if it was rather ambitious for a Game Boy Color, it seems surprisingly straightforward to steer and otherwise control your car. You know what else I'd rather play? Sanic R. And yes, that's Sanic, not Sonic. Oh, now this game is fancy. It has a license plate! Does that say fart? Oh, it's, it's fast. Never mind. Um... On second thought, this isn't really any better.
You know what else I'd rather play? Sanic Ball. And just like Sanic R, that's also a racing game that's a joke on purpose. I mean, look at that shit. Holy crap, this game has one of the songs from Sonic R as part of its soundtrack. I should try that. I don't know about this. The LEGO Racers music worked better? I guess? I don't know. God. Anyways, New York City is another urban environment in the game. I'm doing some kind of a time attack challenge right now. SHIT! How is it that I keep colliding with traffic in these urban races even though the streets are relatively empty? Oh yeah, the streets actually are... kind of empty. So it's not realistic AND I still fucking suck at this! And yeah, I know that pointing out the unrealistic lack of traffic congestion isn't a fair criticism, since you need the roads to be clear enough for the game to be playable, but... I don't know, other games seem to have done a better job with it somehow. Since I've already played it, I'll look at Need for Speed the Run as an example. You go through New York City in that game too, and it's all kinds of fun to weave in and out of lanes of traffic, even though some of the roads are more narrow as well to increase the challenge. I don't know what it is, maybe it's primarily the fact that traffic doesn't swerve all over the road in an unpredictable manner. Also, for what it's worth, I think a subconscious advantage we have here is that you're not expecting a car to flip 20 feet in the air if you collide with it. So you get more of an adrenaline rush rather than a subpar version of slapstick comedy. In other words, you get better physics. And I'm not saying that Need for Speed The Run is a great game overall, but it's a hell of a lot better than Test Drive 6. And yes, I know, it's not fair to compare a Need for Speed game from 2011 to Test Drive 6 when the former came out over a decade later. It's alright though, I do have a couple of genuine compliments to give Test Drive 6. There is some attention to detail when it comes to the inclusion of landmarks. They featured quite a few in this New York City course, for instance. You can see the Chrysler Building, Central Park, the Flatiron Building, the Statue of Liberty, Washington Square Arch, the Empire State Building, the World Trade Center. Oh yeah, it has the World Trade Center in the game. Uh, not only in the road course, but even the loading screen features that landmark quite prominently. This game was released in 1999 after all, but that's actually my other compliment. The loading screens for these levels look quite nice, and that might sound like I'm grasping at straws for something else positive to say about this game, and you'd kind of be right, but still, they look good. I think the one for New York City might be my favorite. I just think it's cool that the shadows on the sides of the towers and the foreground shot transition into the Manhattan skyline at night in the background shot. Now, speaking of 1999, there was another racing game that came out that year that I played as a kid, and I want to do a more serious and fair comparison, so I can't keep talking about the run anymore in that context. As it turns out, though, this other game was also another Need for Speed title. Need for Speed High Stakes. I got a lot more mileage out of that game two decades ago than I did from Test Drive 6. So here we have two games, both racing titles, released the very same year that I played as a kid. I can't really wish for a better comparison opportunity than that. Too bad Test Drive 6 gave me so much to talk about that I'm burned out at the moment, so that comparison will come another day. Besides, if I didn't split this up, I'd probably be here for well over an hour. So yeah, that's all I really have to say for now. So have a nice day, don't drink and drive, and don't play this game while you're sober.